Right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining how you can kill off an old weed filled lawn and how you can actually give yourself a blank canvas ready for your next lawn renovation. So you can see that the lawn that I'm killing off in today's video is in an absolute state. It's full of all different kinds of weeds. There's clover, there's dandelion, there's tons of other things. And you can just see it's really overgrown. This is a lawn that I've not really kept on top of over the past maybe eight, nine months. I've left it to go into this sort of sorry state and it's time now to actually kill it off and to reseed it from scratch. So the first thing you wanna be doing then before you actually get on with the weed killer is to scalp your grass as much as you can. And all that means is getting your lawnmower, putting it on the lowest setting and taking off as much of the grass and the weeds as you possibly can. The product that I'm using to kill the grass and to kill the weeds is a product that actually kills the root of the plant. So the lower you can get your grass, the better. <music> see as well that I'm dumping out all of the dead grass just in front of the bushes there eventually it's going to decompose and break down over time but if you do have a garden recycle bin get ready because you are going to be filling it pretty quickly depending on the size of your lawn now for this next step I'm scarifying the lawn using an electric scarifier if you don't have one already I'd honestly recommend buying one because they are worth the weight in gold you can get them from like a tool station screw fix Aldi and it just makes scarifying your lawn that much easier rather than using a manual scarifier. At this point as well, you'll notice that I saw something in the grass and it was a massive rock that I had to pull out with the mattock. I didn't film it, but there's a massive hole there now, which when I come to overseed, I'm gonna fill with topsoil. So before you do a second pass using the scarifier, it's a good job just to get rid of all that thatch that's sitting on top of your lawn. Now, if you're not sure exactly what thatch is, it's just a buildup of dead grass and dead matter that sits just below the grass in that soil layer. Now, some thatch is good for your lawn because it can keep moisture in the soil, but too much can suffocate the lawn. So then I got on with the scarifier, did a second pass just to rip out any more of the thatch. But if you do have a bigger lawn than me, as in like a wider lawn, or you've not got one that's on a slope, it might be worth going in a different direction too just because that's a better way to rip out as much thatch as possible. You can see that after the second time of scarifying, there's not even half as much thatch on the lawn, but you can still see that there is quite a significant amount that does need to be removed from the lawn before getting on with the product. And then did one final pass with the lawnmower just to pick up any of the loose thatch before applying the weed killer. So before you even start applying the product to your lawn, you need to measure out your space just to make sure that you put the right amount down. And I'm using the Roundup Concentrate today to actually kill off the lawn. Something I do wanna say on this product is that if you buy it in the ready to use form, it's not gonna be as strong. There are certain regulations in the UK that say, if you're buying ready to use products, they can't be too strong because they can damage all sorts of different flora and fauna knocking about you know, in the local area. However, if you buy it in the concentrate form, like what I've done, then you can actually make it as strong as you want so you can you know, more easily kill off the spaces you wanna destroy. So as you'll see for the rest of the video, I actually use sort of two different methods to kill off the lawn. The first is what you're seeing on screen now, which is with a watering can. And later on, I actually use a knapsack backpack sprayer as well. Now, using the watering can, you'll notice that I use almost the entire bottle of the Roundup Concentrate, which is far too much. The reason why I applied so much is that the watering can was only able to sort of cover about two square meters worth of space on the lawn. So I was putting between five and seven mil of the product to kill off that particular area. I thought if I put too little in the watering can, then it'd be not as effective and it may need a second sort of pass using the Roundup, which is quite funny really, because you know, in the end, I ended up buying a second knapsack spray just to apply this product, which to be honest, I should have just done in the first place anyway. So like I've just said, I picked up another Oregon knapsack spray 
and this is the same spray that I've been using for the last 12 months to apply things like liquid iron, liquid seaweed and wet an agent to my lawn. The reason why I picked up a second knapsack sprayer is because you shouldn't be using the same sprayer that you use for weed killer as what you use for things like your liquid irons and your liquid nitrogens because if there's any of that weed killer left in the sprayer, even on the walls of the sprayer, it can contaminate any of the product that you put on your lawn. So by buying a second one, you just save your skin doing it that way. The relatively cheap as well. This one's around about thirty-five pounds, even less, I think, on Amazon. So, not a bad purchase if you don't yet own a knapsack sprayer. As you may have noticed as well, I use significantly less of this product when applying it with the knapsack sprayer, and that's just because the sprayer enables you to distribute that product much more evenly across the lawn compared to when you're using a watering can. So by this point now, it's been about two weeks since I actually applied the weed killer using the watering can. And you can see there's a few green tips coming through and a few weeds, but they've gone quite yellow, which means you know they're still on the way to dying. So that second application is sometimes needed just to kill off any stubborn weeds and stubborn grass. And there we go, another week later, and the lawn is pretty much dead. All of the grass has gone brown, it's all wilted, all the roots have been destroyed from below. We have got the odd weed like this knocking about, but you can just see from the look of it, it's not in a healthy state whatsoever. So the plants might actually still be there slightly, but it's because the weeds have been destroyed from underneath, and eventually, the plant is gonna die. Any of the stubborn weeds that are left, you can just pull them out with a weed puller because the roots underneath are gonna be in bits. So I'm gonna be giving it another week just to make sure that all the product has degraded in the soil. And then I'm gonna be getting on with some new topsoil, some new seed, and I'll be showing you in a future video how I bring this lawn back to life. If you are thinking of killing your lawn off because you want to start from scratch again, or if your lawn was in a state like this lawn was, hopefully you found today's video useful. If you did, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to check out any of my other videos, such as my lawn tip videos, or any of my garden renovation, then head over to my channel. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And finally, thanks for watching.